Hey guys, after the Spitfire Maiden, I knew that I had to make some changes to accommodate the deficiency in ventilation up front on the Spitfire. And when I, even on 3S, although there was no ventilation, even on 3S, the ESC that came stock with the uh, Spitfire was still really hot. So what I wanted to do is, is uh, I've, on pretty much all of my Diamond planes, I've done something to either an ESC or a motor. I think the one exception might be the Thunderbolt. And I think that's pretty much stock except for the prop. But because of all that work, I've managed to accumulate some spare ESCs. And while I took the 30, 30 amp out of the Spitfire, I got out a 40 amp that I had in something else and a 50 amp that I had in, I think, the Corsair. So I thought I would do, first off, just do a little side-by-side -side comparison. When I pulled that 30 amp out, I was really shocked at how thin that thing was. Um, trying to get this to focus a little better. There we go. So I was really shocked at how thin that thing is compared to the 40 and, of course, the 50. I guess proportionately it probably looks about right, but i got to be honest with you, that almost looks like more like a 20 amp ESC to me. Um, I don't have a lot of experience with smaller than 30 amp ESC, so I'm not 100% sure, but... Anyway, that 30 amp yellow one, that's the one that came in the Spitfire. That's gonna go, I'm not gonna use that anymore. Now, I also got out a range, let me get these set out real quick. I got out a range of motors that I had thinking that while I was working on this upgrade, I might go ahead and just swap out the motor for something more powerful. So I've got the SK3 that I ran on the Hellcat. I've got an OS motor. I've got an Emax GT motor, and I've got one of these Exceed RC motors. And they're all in the same 35 millimeter family, but except for the, G the Emax, that's a 28 uh, series motor. Very powerful though. So before I decided to pull the motor off of the Spitfire, I ran a watt meter test, and what I found out was on 4S, the thing was pulling 500 watts. So I, I really don't think it needs a motor upgrade. It looks to me like there's plenty of power in this airplane. The real problem has to do with ventilation and getting an ESC that can handle that. So with a 4S battery, uh, I'll do the math and stick it in the, in the text in the video. But with a 4S battery, that's 14 volts. This thing pulled 500 amps. It was right around 30, 32, 33 amps maximum. So. I, I don't think it's, I, I think that's a pretty reasonable power arrangement. I think the motor is putting enough, putting enough power out. You just got to use a 4S pack and make sure you have an ESC that can handle it. So obviously the 30 amp ESC, that's no good. And this is all static and I know you get about a 10 to 15% benefit, but on my planes, I just don't like cutting it that close. I like plenty of overhead. And given that the, the Spitfire needs a little weight up front, and by the way, there are the weights that I took off the nose. Those are the three weights that I added for the Maiden to get the CG up to 72. And I had them, they were right here. And obviously I've cut that piece out now, so I can't put them back there, but that's where I had them. Uh, but instead of using weights, ah, I'll just put a bigger ESC in there and uh, get the benefit of an ESC that runs a little cooler and I don't have to carry just dead weight. So anyway, that's the upgrade strategy. Uh, again, the motor on 4S and I used a Zippy con Compact I cannot fit a 40C pack inside this airplane, so this is a 25C 4S. 25C series right there in the middle. Um, so normally I like to run these tests with a 40C pack just to make sure that the battery can deliver whatever it is the plane's asking for. But anyway, 500 watts on a 4S pack with a 30 amp ESC and the stock propeller, that's decent, that is decent power for this size airplane. So I'm just gonna upgrade the ESC and put everything back together again. I'll check out my air cooling. I've already made my cut. You can see, and what happens is when you put, I'm gonna move this stuff off the wing so I can show you. Okay, so when I put the spinner right on where it's gonna cover, you can see now I've got an air scoop that'll be force fed from the prop wash in, into the airplane right there. And that, by the way, when I take this cover off, you can see, um, oh, let me take the back off, that'll help. There you go. That's where the ESC sits, so that airflow will go right down into that ESC compartment and just move some air over the top. The only thing I have to do now is figure out where to put an exit hole in the back, because that's got to be done too. Otherwise, it's like flying, taking an umbrella and dragging it through water. So you, if you put a hole in the front, you got to put a hole in the back as well. So I've got to do that.
on in this uh, paint that's missing here, that wasn't because of the back plate. That was because I took my razor and just kind of trimmed it a little bit where it was rubbing when I first put it together. So anyway, that's the upgrade strategy. Bigger ESC, little ventilation. I'll put a hole in the back so my, my ventilation can come out. I'll put a prop back on here and we'll test it again with the uh, other ESC and see if we're making that same 500 watts. I expect we will, um, but that's the upgrade strategy. So let me get to work and I'll get a video put together as soon as I have it all buttoned up showing you the result. All right, guys, one other thing I did before I uh, put some Sharpie on this to kind of hide the exposed foam was I took my razor knife along this edge and I just I just kind of worked to bevel this a little bit. You could do this with sandpaper, too, if you wanted to. But all I did was to see I'm just taking a real thin, thin layer out there and just kind of the idea was just to give this a little bit of a bevel. So the, there wasn't a big, hard square edge right there on the front of the plane. And that allows the air to flow over a little smoother. So. I know this isn't a racing plane and we're not going for lap times or anything like that, but if you're going to do it, it just takes a few extra seconds. It makes it look a little better. And um, now I've got a nice little, whoops, sorry. Now I've got a nice little bevel in there. So the air, as the air comes in, it'll just flow, flow right over and go through my ESC compartment. Okay. Okay, guys, I'm getting ready to make the hole in the back to allow the ventilation to escape. And I wanted to show you how I did it. Um, obviously, if you if you look at the it might be hard to see it but if you look at that back bulkhead where the control wires go in you could probably go way back and and put a hole back there but it's just that's a real small hole so what i opted to do instead was to find a spot in the compartment and there is a, a pretty significant duct right under there for the servo wires and that's where the servos mount for the rudder and, and elevator so i know the air will flow through there as it comes in the nose and it'll flow right underneath the servo. So I'm gonna to opt to put my outbound ventilation hole right there. Now, another thing to think about when you cut this hole is you don't want that to be a forward facing scoop because you don't wanna bring more air in in the back. So there's my, I don't know if you can see it. There it is, there's the razor tip blade. Now, when I cut that, I'm gonna turn the airplane around and cut it from the tail. So, and I'll bevel it. I'll, I'll do video and show you what it looks like, but I'm gonna bevel it so that it's an outbound hole. We don't want that to scoop air as well because it wouldn't have anywhere to go. So that needs to be, think egress. That's gotta be egress for the airflow going through the battery compartment. Okay, so let me carve that out and I'll show you what it, what it looks like when I'm done. Okay guys, I decided I wanted to go ahead and, and uh, I'm gonna do my best to try and show you how I'm doing this so you can get the right shape for this. Because as I was cutting it, I thought, yeah, this may not be obvious to everyone on how to do it. So basically what I started with is a, is a small hole, right? I just made a small little almond shaped hole right here in the middle where I wanted to start. And then I gradually start expanding it from there. And the trick to it is when you're, as you move forward to the forward edge of the hole, you, you, and by the way, you want a really sharp knife for this. But as you move forward, you want your blade, sorry, I'm trying to watch my work in the, in the camera, but you want your blade straight up and down. All right, because you want this leading edge of the hole to be to be basically perpendicular perpendicular to the ground okay and then as you do the back part of your hole you tilt the blade and you don't cut all the way you don't cut all the way down to the bottom right there you just tilt the blade and carve it back right so I'll, I'll just try and do one little cut here and show you what I mean but you just take your blade and work along the side and just tilt it see how if I'm tilting it backwards and as you tilt it backwards, you come into your the corner of the shape that I've, I've carved out. And that leaves you with a nice bevel. And I'll, I'll pick that scrap out in a minute. But that leaves you with a nice bevel right here for the air to egress. And this the front part will not act as a scoop. So that's the idea. You, you just want to have this part you know, be kind of beveled in so the air can egress out but not be pulled in on, on the front of the hole. Okay, that's the idea. Okay guys, on CG, I mentioned that I was going to, if I had to, I'd rake the gear forward a little bit more. So I, I met three popsicle sticks now under the, under the rear wheel. And the other thing that I did was I took the tail wheel off and I increased that bend right there just a little bit, just to um, let the tail settle down a little bit lower after it lands. So, you know, it's got a big tail moment on this plane. So the farther, you know, if, if you're, if your tail is here and you come to a stop, it takes a certain amount of inertia to get that tail to come up. If it's down here, it takes that much more inertia. So the trick is to bend the tail wheel so that it gets it down a little bit lower, 
but doesn't drag things like your your rudder along along the ground when it's screwed in so that's what I did I just uh, I just bent the tail wheel just a little bit more and then as far as balance goes I mentioned after the maiden video that I was gonna move back the black dot right there that's the uh, right there that black dot that's where I maidened it and that's about 72 millimeters and I went ahead and moved it back to about 77 78 millimeters uh, there were no bad tendencies at 72 millimeters flying this airplane. It, it was completely locked in, not even close to pitchy. I didn't have any tracking problems, so uh, I'm very comfortable moving the CG back a little bit. So I'm going to try it there at about 77. The good news is, is with that 50 amp ESC up front and a four cell battery, I don't require any extra weight and I'm right there on that 76, 77 millimeters for CG. So that's it. That's uh, CG is... Uh, yeah, updated and we'll see what happens next time I fly it. All right guys, there's a look with the tail wheel after I bent it a little bit. I tend not to land hard on the tail wheels anyway, so I'm not too worried about that. Worst case scenario, I'll get a little scuff mark from the wheel on the on the airframe, but that's the tail wheel bent up a little bit. And coming from where I started, it was probably a little bit more like that. So you can see that just lowering it uh, or bending it a little bit gives you uh, a definite more pronounced angle up front and it should help keep that tail down when you're ground handling and hopefully when I'm landing. Uh, I'm hoping that cures the tip over problems that I've been having with this plane. All right guys, so there's there's the front of the plane. I just took a little Sharpie and just kind of colored in that white so it looked just darker and it'd be harder to see any slight imperfections with, the, with all the peripheral equipment back on. And then one other thing that I do is, and I wanted to show you on, and, on the nose cone, on these nose cones, I just put a little dab of Loctite right there on the tip. That's it, just a little bit. You don't wanna put so much on there that you seal the thing on because then, you know, if you ever have to change anything out up front, you're really gonna curse yourself trying to pull it apart. But just one little dab of, of uh, Loctite and then, you know, smear it around, let it dry for a second, and then I'll put the prop adapter on. And that just kind of gives you a little extra assurance that collet grips and stays on, on snug with that uh, prop shaft. Okay guys, the Spitfire modifications are now complete. Let me show you, just recap what I did real quick. The first thing I did was on the bottom, I cut open an air scoop. So now I have airflow going in and the prop wash will actually, you know, you'll have forward airspeed helping, but the prop wash will actually help uh, shove some air in there as well. It's gonna go right, right through there from the prop. So all I did was I just cut a nice little unit. I mean, I know you know, this is not, I mean, let's face it, guys, this is a $120 airplane. This is not a super scale bird. So all the scale guys are probably rolling over going, ah, how could you do that? Well, you need air cooling over electronics. That's, so you got to do something. And that was the most least, that was the least invasive way I could think to do it. And I think the black, you know, with a little bit of black, it just kind of helps mask it. You don't really see into it. It just looks like, it kind of looks like a decoration, to be honest with you, from a distance. So anyway, the good news is there's airflow. And then on the back, there's the uh, egress hole and I did the same thing. I just took my Sharpie and, and colored in the white so you don't see the imperfections and it doesn't stand out like a sore thumb. It's black, it's a lot more subtle. And there's even some other black stuff on the bottom of the plane all over the place. So servos, uh, screw, screw clamps, wheels, you know, there's black all over this airplane. So a little bit of extra black right there, no problem, not gonna hurt it. But that's gonna get me some airflow moving through the plane. And one thing I forgot about, I don't know if I'll be able to do this with two hands, but or with, with just one hand and one operating camera. There's the 50 amp ESC. Of course, it didn't stutter that time. The 30 amp uh, Dynam ESCs don't stutter. The 40s and 50s do. When I first powered it on with the prop, I felt a little bit of a stutter. But you know what? I'm okay with that for now. Uh, I'll live with it. I'm going to fly it this way, and I'm going to rag the hell out of it, too. Um, now that I've got some ventilation, I've got a 50 amp ESC. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to rag this plane and see what it can do. Um, I'll put the watt meter on there and get a quick little watt meter test just to close out the video. OK, guys, here's the watt meter test for the uh, the Dynam Spitfire with the four cell pack and the 50 amp Detrim ESC the, that I borrowed from one of my other Detrim planes. Um, if you're not familiar with this watt meter, here's the amp draw. This is voltage 16.6. Here's the wattage and here's the max amperage. So the max amperage will stay after the run. So we'll get an idea of how many amps it pulled total. And then power, that's the number we're really interested in, how many watts and how many amps. 
So here we go. I'm gonna enable my throttle safety and we're gonna just run it up. So 465 watts and it maxed out at 32 amps. I'm gonna do it one more time. Okay, so 29 amps of 433 watts. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that's gonna be pretty good. And it's a 50 amp BSC, so I got a lot of headroom in this, in this uh, airplane to uh, be able to run it, you know, at full tilt if I want for a while. Okay, that's it. That's a wrap for the, uh, that's a wrap for the uh, Spitfire upgrade video. And uh, I appreciate your attention. Hopefully, this has been helpful to you. And um, if it has been helpful, please hit the like and subscribe button because that will help my channel results show up higher in the search when people are looking for this type of information. All right, take care.